So here's just a wee quick video, guys. Uh, I've done this in the past, but um, I think it bears repeating. It's been some time since I actually showed you this. So with a clamp on a mirror, um, you can put it to good use in your car. When it comes to checking the functionality of really any electrical load on it, right? And it's quick and it's easy. So the beauty of this is, is you look at your car and you think, well, let's check the headlight circuit, for example, or let's start with the tail lights, with the parking lights, then we'll go to the tail lights, then we'll go to the headlights, the high beams and the uh, driving lights, just to make a point. And I'll show you how you can check their functionality based on a current draw. Do you agree with me that for current to be drawn, some kind of work must be getting done? Whatever that load does, whether it's a seat heater or a, your rear defroster or whatever it is. Anyway, perhaps it's just best if I show you. So this is just a clamp on I'm here. I've had for some time. Let's go with the 40 amp scale here. That's good enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zero it here. And then I'm going to clamp around. Would Does it make sense? that every single electrical load on the car here, the current is going to return through the ground line here, yeah? Through the negative path. Yes, there's two of them. As you can see, they branch together. So I'm going to go around both of them. And any electrical draw on the car is going to be monitored via the current draw here, right? So my son's actually inside. He's going to help me turning on the loads here at my request. He just stepped inside the car. So the car is somewhat woke up here. You can see it's actually drawing 150 milliamps at the moment. It's quasi woke up, right? Okay. Important to note, how we're going to monitor each load here is simply by whatever the nominal draw is at the moment. We're going to zero that out. And right now, so it's close to zero. Let me do it again. Get as close to zero as possible. So now any loads we turn on, I don't need to know where the wiring is. I don't care where the wiring runs for through the fuse block or elsewhere in the chassis or the ground lines for the circuit are. I can monitor every single milliamp draw that's going to any electrical load on the car right from this point. Does that make sense? Again, let's just demonstrate and maybe it make a bit more sense. Stevie, turn on just the parking lights, please. Okay. So there's the parking lights on on the car, guys. You can maybe see the reflection on my garage door there. I'll bring on the, the marker lights in the back as well, as well as the tail lights. So again, just some quick math here. Let's assume the battery statically here is 12 volts. It'll be a wee bit higher than that. We don't need to be dead accurate. Let's just get in the ballpark. 12 times, let's call it three, because it'll be a wee bit more than 12. Does it make sense that that would be about 36 watts of load? It does make sense, right? These don't draw much. The wee marker lights, there may be five watts each, but the, the, the tail lights, a wee bit more, right? Step on the uh, brake lights, CV. There you can see the brake lights are now operative. How do I know that? They must be operative because they're drawing current. They must be operative. Again, I have no idea where the wiring is for the brake lights. Release the brakes, Stevie. Now the brake lights have stopped functioning and that current is now gone. Right, let me zero again. So now that draw, although the load is still there, that draw is now being nulled out by the meter and being ignored. That's why it tells you you're now operating under a relative zero. A relative zero, not zero, a relative zero. Okay, turn just the headlights on, Stevie. Okay. Both my headlights are on there, guys, as you can see. Now there's nine additional amps of draw. Again, nine times 12, uh, just over 100 watts-ish. It makes sense. These headlights are 55 watts each. I know that for a fact. And I've, I know what the draw is on the headlights. It's 55 and 60, respectively, I think. So just go at the high beam, Stevie. You should see this step up nominally. The high beams, again, of course, are drawing an additional 10 watts-ish. You can see the current is reflected back to low beam. Okay. 
So leave them there for just a moment, Stevie. You have to have the headlights on in order to function the driving lights on this car here, guys. If you don't have the headlights on, the driving lights will not operate in low beam mode. As soon as you go to high beam, the driving lights will cut out. So let me zero it again. So there we're zeroed. Okay, Stevie, turn on the uh, driving lights, please. And we have an additional eight and a half amps, right? So you can see both driving lights are functional there, guys. Again, the beauty of this, guys, I have no idea where the wiring is or the fuses are in the box for these circuits that we're looking at. But I can monitor the current draw right from here. Every single milliamp is going to go through this, these two leads, which are twinned in here inside the tape. And I can monitor the draw. How much are the driving lights pulling? Uh, about 100 watts, 50 watts each. It's reasonable, right? Sounds good. Drop the driving light, Stevie. And we'll go back to the relative zero. Turn the headlights off, son. Drop all the load. Okay. Zero again. Go to the run position, Stevie. And the ignition. Okay. So here, guys, all the, you might have seen the, I've seen the fuel pump draw there momentarily. This is, you can hear the uh, electronic throttle control. All the circuits are active in order to have the car actually is waiting for a start command now at the moment, right? We're not going to start the car. I'm in the garage here. Let me zero this. Okay. So again, all that load is being ignored. And we now have a fresh zero point here, right? So there might be a wee bit of load coming and going here, guys. Let me zero again. Zero. So I just turned on the backlight here, guys. Maybe you can see the meter a wee bit better. So uh, again, we're in the run position. But again, I've nulled out all that current and it's a, a relative zero. Do it again. Okay, so relative zero. Um, just uh, operate one of the windows there, Stevie. Put it up. All the windows in the car are down at the moment. So you can see the current there, draw there, guys. Then my son's let go of the switch. You, and uh, we're, uh, put that same window down, Stevie, again. And you can see the current draw. So you were holding the switch there momentarily? Yeah. Yeah, I could tell. The uh, So you can see, again, with the current draw, there must be work being done, right? So the circuit is functional without having any clue where the uh, where the wiring is the things like the window are obvious whether they're working or not you simply look at it right but some of the stuff is not so obvious right um turn on the uh, one of the seat heaters stevie so there's the draw on the seat heater so those things are operating at about 50 watts ish is that right two times no that's not right uh 20 uh, about 30 watts ish those heaters Turn on the other seat heater, Stevie. Shoot a double, and it doubles. So both of those seat heaters are actually operative. Turn them off, son. Okay, so let's go for the... Um, uh, turn on the fan to the first speed, Stevie. And just every five seconds or so, toggle it up to the next speed, son. Again, you can hear the fan operative, but some of the loads, you can't see or hear whether they're actually working. And that is the beauty of actually checking these loads right here. If there's current draw, there must be being work being done. Now, yes, something could be seized and it's physically not moving or whatever. Like in the case of the windshield wipers, you know, they could be seized solid. Uh, the pivot points or something like that. And there's no work being done, in which case you'd see the, you'd see the current spike. It wouldn't be a, lin a linear current draw, right? You could see um, just how the load is actually operating as well with respect to that. This is a linear current draw. The faster the fan the more current is being drawn, right? So it's quite a lot of load, right? Uh, 11 amps times 12 and 12, that's about 150 watts-ish. Consider the batteries 12 and a half, 12, six volts-ish. Won't be that now, we've had quite a bit of load up for quite some time. Okay, turn them off, Stevie, turn the fan off. Okay, so anyway, I think that's enough. You've seen various loads throughout the car actually demonstrated. Again, I have no idea where the wiring is, guys. You can spend a lot of time digging through the diagram. You can spend a lot of time looking at the various looms, you know, to see what, where is this wire exactly? How does this work? Some of it, I'm not saying you can do it for every load, obviously, guys, but most of it, some of it, if not most of the loads, 
can actually be checked just through this simple check, right? Just use a bit, apply a bit of common sense. Like the headlights, for example. I know the wattage. I know the expected current draw roughly by just doing the math, right? Power is current times voltage. Just go the other way around if you know the, any of the variables and then work the formula backwards. It's not rocket science, guys. This is simple, straightforward. You could save yourself a lot of time if, you, if you're looking at major disassembly. Just do a basic check like this. Make it make it make sense. Make it worth your while to do some digging or disassembly. If uh, you can confirm there's no current draw from an expected load under the right operating conditions, maybe it's worth your time to start digging. Right. That's it. That's it, boys. Cheers.